What is up? So, this video is going to be about all of the paramotor gear that I use for paragliding and paramotoring. And I'll just go through each piece and explain why I chose this type of gear and uh, what I use it for and what I think of it and how I like it. Hope you guys enjoy. First things first, this thing. Almost every video I post, I get questions about this helmet. This helmet is an HGU-56. It is technically a helicopter pilot helmet. And uh, I'll be honest, they are very expensive. Um, I'm lucky enough that this one I didn't have to pay for. So that's why I use it. My favorite thing about this helmet is the dual visor. This is a smoke visor. And this is a clear visor. So when the sun sets, it's super fast for me to switch between having sun protection for my eyes to having uh, clear protection, but I still get the eye protection from bugs uh, that are in the air while I'm flying around. Second thing I really love about this helmet is the ear protection. Hang on, I'll take it off and show you guys. All right, so as I was saying, the second thing I love about this helmet is the ear protection. The ear cups that are in here are, are foam padded ear cups, but they do a very, very good job of dampening the sound of the motor. Much quieter than the traditional uh, paramotor helmet that most people make. Uh, mounted on this HGU-56, I have a Cena. I think it's a SMH-5 or 10. I think it's a 10. I don't remember exactly which model it is. I've had it for years. I used it on my motorcycle, and uh, I've had zero issues with it. I love this thing. Best piece of equipment you can purchase to listen to music while you fly. So I wired that into this helmet. This helmet does come with a aviation comm harness, but I don't even own a handheld aviation radio to plug this into, so I just zip tie the cable in the back. The Cena Bluetooth speakers are in there along with the original helmet speakers. And then uh, this is my microphone setup. So the Bluetooth, uh, this is the original boom mic that comes with the helmet. My Bluetooth uh, Cena mic is underneath this phone piece here. This is a $20 Amazon uh, microphone, like a, just a lapel mic that I clipped on there. And then the cable, I usually just plug into my phone and record audio, just leave the phone in my pocket, and then when I edit videos, I just sync the audio with the video. And that's how I get my audio for my in-flight videos. Uh, this is a night vision goggle mount, but obviously we can't fly paramotors legally at nighttime, so I've never used it. What else? Uh, this face mask is removable. I flew without it for a while, but once I started flying with a face mask, it's so much better. It's so nice to have that face shield. It keeps the wind off your face, keeps bugs off your face, and it looks cool, although that's uh, debatable. Some people think it looks like Dark Vader. <laughs> GoPro mount, yeah, typical bro GoPro mount just like everyone else has in their helmet. The huge downside to this helmet is it's very snaggy, so lines can hook in a number of places on this helmet. That's something to keep in mind. I wouldn't say this is a good beginner helmet, but if you've got your launches and your landings nailed down where you're not snagging lines on your helmet anymore, then uh, this helmet gets a thumbs up for me. I love it. While I'm on the subject of helmets, this was my first paramotor helmet, GoPro mount. Uh, I have this piece of string just to throw around the GoPro in case the sticky mount decides to let go so I don't lose my camera. Uh, most people make these helmets themselves or buy them. Yeah, there's tons of videos out there on how to make a paramotor helmet and you'll find these. Ear protection is not as good, but it works and it's super cheap. This was my first helmet. This is my paraglider helmet slash 
bicycle slash general hooligan helmet, GoPro mount, and this is also my sticker helmet. All the stickers I get, I just slap on this thing. So, yeah, uh, I can't even tell you what all the rash is from anymore because I've crashed in this helmet multiple times. Don't be like me. Next, most obvious, you need a paramotor to fly. Um, my previous videos talk about the Gravity Defiant paramotor. Still loving it. It's freaking awesome. There's not a better paramotor for your money on the market right now. All the other manufacturers better listen up and drop your prices down to match this one at least. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be selling any more paramotors. Um, I do have an update for you guys. Look at this netting. Oh, that's some homemade netting fix right there. 100% my fault. So what happened was the gravity team sent spacers for the motor mounts right here. Um, but I thought that the angle of the, the thrust line on the frame was a little bit too far tilted down. So I took those spacers out completely and I actually flew it like that with an E-prop. And it was fine until I put the helix prop on. The extra thrust from the helix and the helix is also closer to your back and I removed those spacers which I probably shouldn't have that made my prop close enough that I nicked the netting in like two or three spots uh, and that happened on the ground I was just full throttle run up and the, the prop the motor mounts flexed enough to cut the netting so I put spacers back in there and now it's good to go I repaired the netting uh, the guys at Gravity are sending me out a new one. It just looks ugly right now, but it's still uh, functional. So that's an update on the motor. Like I said, 100% my fault. I shouldn't have uh, experimented, but I did anyway. I'll be the test dummy for you guys, so you don't have to make the same, same mistakes that I do. Yeah, no changes to the motor since my last video. I love it. I've put, I don't know, probably 5 to 10 more hours on it since then. No issues. It gets better every flight as I uh, become accustomed to how it feels and takes takes off and lands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is my old paramotor. It's already sold, but uh, it's a power to fly RS slash kind of a prototype frame. Uh, I really liked this paramotor. However, this was cheaper. I bought this brand new. I bought this used, and it still cost more than that did. So. No biggie though. I have no complaints with that motor. I loved it. Flew it for a long time. I saw this out of the corner of my eye. I thought I'd show you guys. So that's a GoPro mount. This is a like a truck LED light you can buy off Amazon or eBay. This is a switch. LiPo battery. 12 volts, 14 volts, whatever. And so this super bright outside so you can't tell how bright this is but it's a pretty bright light at night and it can clip onto any gopro mount so any of the helmets that i have over there i can slap this thing on and boom i got a pretty bright headlamp it is heavy and bulky but it's just something i came up with next up gadgets this is a hexagon chase cam made by uh josh murdoch I've had this thing for years and it's held up. I've repaired it a few times, you know, just some hot glue. It's made of foam board and hot glue pretty much. And uh, I record with a GoPro session and a uh, Hero Session 5. I have another session over there. Uh, the Session 5 is what I use mostly because the quality is better, obviously. And then I use the uh, regular session as like a backup cam. I like them because they're simple. They work, they don't glitch out, and they're small and compact. I don't need the screen and all the other whiz-bang stuff that the latest GoPros come with. Um, I like these little cheap clips to clip the chase cam onto the wing. And I just clip it onto the D or C risers, depending on which wing I'm flying. Next up, reserves. So a lot of people use uh, the paramotor mounted reserves that stay on your paramotor. I prefer this because I use the same reserve to go paragliding with. Uh, inside of here is a sup air 
lightweight uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called but it's a lightweight size large sup air reserve um, it's got a Y bridle and the way it works is this clip right here I just throw it around my shoulder straps and clip it in so it kind of hangs right at my belt line and uh, these the Y bridle clips into the normal carabiners before the wing clips in and so I can use this paramotoring and then when I land I take it off and if I go paragliding the next day take the same reserve and I clip it into my paraglider harness so I only had to buy one reserve but it serves two purposes <clears throat> radios this is a Baofeng $25 Amazon walkie-talkie you're supposed to have a ham radio license to operate this thing they're super cheap and they work uh, they're line of sight radios obviously so if you can't see the other person you can't talk to them but if someone's in the air and you're still standing on the mountain these are great I mostly only use these for uh, like training people or for paragliding in the air to talk to the buddies that are already flying this is a Vario Flytech 4005 and yeah I mean it works when you go up it beeps when you go down it beeps or unless you turn it off it tells you if you're climbing or descending uh, it's good for thermaling I don't use it ridge soaring some some paraglider pilots always fly with theirs I don't I only use it if I'm trying to thermal I got this in a deal when I bought some paragliding equipment uh, there's also apps on your phone however they're not as accurate as this is this is like super accurate compared to a phone app but the phone app to, in my opinion works just fine and if you can thermal with a phone app Vario then you don't really need this this just makes thermaling a little bit easier because it's more accurate see that's the sound it makes when I raise it when I raise it up Hero Session 5 my main camera that I record with my watch that I use, this is a Garmin Phoenix. You can unlock it. I have a PPG app. I'll turn on real quick and show you guys. That's the Flight Fields app that's turning on now. Live track started. As soon as I start an activity, it automatically sends an email to my wife so she can live track. She, she can pull up the website and it shows exactly where I'm at at all times. So if something were to happen, at least someone knows where I'm at. Um, Gives you altitude, speed, how far you've flown, average miles per hour. If I, if I click to the next screen, I have a couple different screens. I kind of give you the same information. The speed on this screen is listed in knots, not miles per hour. Uh, I have a vertical speed indicator, although that Vario is not near as accurate as that Vario is, but it still works. Uh, heading, it's just another screen of some... Uh, some things that I chose to put on there. You can customize this to show whatever you want, really. And then it also, if you get a text message in the air, it'll pop up with the text message, and you can read it really quick to see if it's important, uh, and if you need to respond to it right away or not. So Garmin Phoenix 3, I've had this for a couple years now. I love it, no complaints. If I was buying uh, a watch now, I would probably get the Phoenix 5, I don't need the features of the 8, the 5 is good enough, and it's just a little bit better than this one, I think. But uh, yeah, love this watch. Totally worth the money, in my opinion. They're very durable, and they give you, instead of having a phone, taking your phone out to find out all your flight information, um, it's all on your wrist. So you don't run the risk of dropping your phone or wasting your phone battery. Uh, the battery on this will last for like at least two weeks, and that's with me using it on the on average uh, probably a couple times a week the activities so yeah you gotta charge this a lot less but uh, gives you all the information that a phone would next up I'm not gonna drag out all these wings but I'm gonna talk about each one tell you what it is so inside of here is a Niviac Zion uh, it's a 15 meter wing and I use it for training uh, kiting practice for myself mostly and uh, it's super great for building reflexes and kiting in strong winds. And uh, overall, probably one of the best investments you can make in, in paragliding or paramotoring. Because this will teach you more 
uh, as far as wing control than any instructor could teach you. You could pay $1,000 for training, or you could buy this wing for $1,000, and you'll learn more from this wing, you know, without tearing up your main wing, than any instructor could ever tell you about wing control. Uh, this wing is for sale, uh, $800 shipped anywhere in the U.S. If you guys are interested, it is in good condition. There's no holes, no tears. Uh, the lines are in good condition still. Uh, if you want more information about it, find me in the groups. Send me a message. But Yep, 15 meter Nivea Xion. Next wing. My main wing that I fly mostly is a 16 meter Drift Air. Uh, I've got some review videos on this thing. Freaking love it. The Drift Air is similar to the Warp. But it's a little bit less spicy, a little more confidence inspiring, but still super fast, super efficient, super fun wing. Next up, this is my Ozone Delta 3. I bought this used re recently, and uh, the bag that this is in is the new Dudek bag, rucksack that they send out with uh, some of their newer wings. And I've used a couple of different rucksacks. I tried the BGD one, I tried the old Dudek rucksack, but... This one's my favorite. It's a perfect size for a wing. I can stuff my harness in here, my reserve, and my helmet, and hike up a mountain with this. And it's a great, great bag. Great wing, Ozone Delta 3. No complaints. Probably my favorite free flight wing I've ever owned. Uh, this harness. So I've owned the Ozone version of this harness. I think it's called the Oxygen 2. But this harness is the Dudek Zeko Seat 2. Um, very, very similar to the Ozone one. I think it's a little bit more comfortable than the Ozone one. It's like the, the leg portion that holds your, the back of your thighs up that you sit on is a little bit longer. So you get a little bit more support with this. Um, it does not come with carabiners though. The Ozone harness does. That is the downside to this harness. And this harness also doesn't come with speed bar pulleys. So I had to add these. Luckily, I had some spares. This bag uh, can expand, so it has two zippers here. If I unzip this one, it will give you me another, you know, about two inches of material that the uh, that expands. So you can make this larger or more smaller, compact. If you're not going to put very much stuff in there, uh, this is a Dudek speed bar. Came with one of my Dudek wings that I bought. I don't remember which one because I've I've gone through so many. Next up, Dudek Universal 25 meter. This is this is my utility wing. So if I'm flying extra weight, if I'm flying uh, with extra fuel for a cross country, or I want to go thermaling, uh, ridge soaring, or just uh, even free flying with, with a wing, this is the wing that I take. Um, especially free flying with lighter winds. This is a 25 meter, so I can soar a ridge in, you know, 8 miles an hour with this wing versus my Ozone Delta 3. I need like 10 miles an hour to soar with up to, you know, 12-ish. Uh, so, yeah. And also, just chill flights. Some nights I don't feel like throwing down. I had a long day. I'm really tired. I want to take two steps and then be in the air and have a stress-free landing as well. I take the Universal and just have a nice, chill evening cruise in the air, watch the sunset from the sky. Footwear. Of course, you got the, the Crocs. When it's super hot outside, throw the Crocs on. Keep your feet cool in the air. You don't have sweaty feet while you're flying around. Or, when it's cold outside, use the old retired combat boots. Uh, cold weather gear, I have this, uh, most of the stuff is army gear, it's free, so of course I'm going to use it. Just keeps my neck warm when it's really cold. I usually wear jeans, and then I'll throw these pants on over the jeans if it's really cold, like if it's 40 degrees or less, then I'll fly with these uh, extra layer of pants on. Jacket, usually I'll wear like a thermal, and then uh, this jacket, and then if it's really cold, even a windbreaker on top of this. Fuel. So this is a two gallon uh, can. This is what I mix my gas in. This is my oil ratio mixture cup. And currently I'm using Amsoil Sabre. 
for my oil. I've tried Motul 710, Motul 800, and now Amsoil Saber. And actually, I prefer the Saber over the other ones. Motul 800 was my least favorite. It was just too uh, created too much carbon buildup inside the motor, with no uh, noticeable benefits as far as engine wear and protection goes. Motul 710 was also good, but hey, this uh, Amsoil is an American company, so I want to support the U.S. economy. I'll use this stuff, and it works very good. So, Amsoil Saber is what I'm using. I uh, dumped the oil in this two-gallon can, and then I have one of these five-gallon cans from Amazon that I'll pour the gas in here, and then I mix, I shake it up inside of this. Uh, with my old motor, I had to use a funnel to fill up the gas tank. You don't have to do that with the new gravity, but these funnels can be found at a, like an auto parts store if you want to get one of those. Pretty handy for filling your paramotor up. Uh, down here, this is like my spare parts drawer. I've got a smoke system, spare fuel line, spare exhaust bushings, all my spare paraglider lines, carbon shroud. Um, I've got spare gaskets in this box here. Just stuff that I've collected over the years, and uh, I put all my spare paramotor parts in this box here. Last but not least, for some reason in the paramotor community, it's like a rule that you have to have some type of electric vehicle transportation. So I recently bought this thing from eWheels.com. It's a guy in the U.S. I did a bunch of research, so if you want the short story, I did all the research for you. The team at eWheels uh, is like the best place to buy an electric unicycle in the U.S. So if you want to get one of these, go there. And you can tell them that uh, I sent you. I'll also put a link in the description where you can just click on that link, take you straight to this website, and buy one of these wheels. This is a mid-range wheel that they sell, and it's called a King Song 14D. King Song 14D is the model of this. 15 miles range, and it cruises about 15 miles an hour. Um, I've rode this thing like all day and drained the battery down to like 50%. So. Yeah, to me, this, this model has plenty of range. It costs $750. It's it's a fun toy, and that's still cheaper than those one wheels that everybody likes to ride on. Uh, I have ridden a one wheel. This is a little bit more challenging to learn to ride, but still only took me less than a day, and I was able to ride it around, even in my inside my house. So, uh, yeah, man, ton of fun. These things are really durable, too. Like, I've crashed this thing a bunch, and... Uh, it's it's held up great. I really enjoy it. It's super fun to ride. It's challenging. It's kind of like paramotoring. It's it's hard. Like you can't get it can't get it down at first, but like once you figure it out, it's uh it keeps you entertained. It's not so easy that it gets boring quick. So yeah, electric unicycle. They also call this thing an uh, EUC, which is short for electric unicycle. But uh, turn this thing on and give you guys a demo real quick. It also has speakers on it, and it does have LED lights. I turned them off because I think they look kind of cheesy. But uh, it's got speakers, so you can play music through it, etc. I'll give you guys a quick demonstration. I've had this thing for about five days. I've got it down enough where I can ride in circles in the garage in a small space. There you go. So when the weather's too windy to fly, hop on your little one wheel thing and zip around or your electric unicycle. eWheels.com Tell them I sent you. It'll help me out. It gives me like 50 bucks if you buy one of these from uh, from the link in the description or if you just put my name saying that uh, I referred you to their website. So, appreciate it. Peace out. Hope you liked the video.